Welcome back everybody. I have a, another Fortran tool for you guys. This one was shown to me in one of the comments and we're going to be looking into this L Fortran. You can see a modern interactive LLVM based Fortran compiler. A lot of words there, but we're going to look into this tool. I'm going to show you guys how to install it. And then we're also going to go into some of its usage. So it's a simple little hello world. And hopefully this will be another tool that you guys can work with. If that all sounds cool to you. Please give this video a like and subscribe. So high level, this L Fortran tool allows Jupyter to interact with Fortran. It allows you to work in that cell environment and do some preemptive coding before maybe you get into your bigger project. Now, Jupyter is a pretty popular environment. A lot of people like to use it because it has that whole text environment that you can work with. And you can also code in certain cells and break up your code and see different output and all this stuff. And it's, it's really nice to use. And Fortran doesn't really have something like that. So this Jupyter level allows you to run code pretty instantaneously and not do the whole compile and run and all that stuff. And uh, let's, let's look more of what we have here. So this is the main page that they have. It describes some of the usage. Also note that it is a pretty alpha stage. So this project's still pretty new. So going deeper into documentation, they have a list of what's currently supported and what's not currently supported and what's in development. And we're going to look more into the installation. Now, if you've done the Fortran package manager, you should already have Conda. It's going to be the same idea where we're going to use Conda to install this L Fortran package. And then I'm going to code up some couple statements and then leave you guys to your own tools. Okay. So now going back, I'll put the link again down in the description that shows how to install Conda. If you've installed it previously from the Fortran package manager, then you should be at this base base layer already, or you need to initialize your base, but we're going to be following the instructions that they have here. And I'm just going to be doing these steps, showing how it installs and continuing on from there. As you can see, the first step they talk about is creating that environment again. And even though you maybe you already created an environment for the Fortran package manager, it's good to separate out all these environments. It's something that maybe if you're coming from Python that you know about, sometimes packages interacting with each other cause other issues. And it's just good to separate these packages, especially since these ones are pre-alpha and you don't know if they're gonna cause issues with other stuff that you work with. Now, following the first step, we're gonna be initializing the environment you can see I have conda create dash n l f next I'm going to be activating it now you can see that my my base is now changed to lf and then now we're going to just install everything now if you already have the conda forge channel added to your conda installation you don't actually need to add this base c flag this is just pointing it towards the conda forge channel you already have it listed then it already know to look there same idea for the next step we're going to install Jupyter. Okay, now you should have everything installed. So the last step is just we activate the Jupyter Notebook itself. And you should see these commands. Now, the main thing you want to do is you want to copy and paste this URL here. So this is my copy and paste. Now I'm going to go into this Jupyter script directory. I'm going to create something new. And you, can, you should see this Fortran Notebook. And we're here. So if you've used Jupyter before, you, you know how Jupyter works. The cell environment we can exit out the cell we can create more cells and delete all these cells and turn this to marks markdown hello world and that's just in text but then i also have a cell and we're going to try out now in jupiter there you go now that just ran in fortran and it printed out hello world now things to note this is still the fortran language so you need to declare stuff before you use them so you should declare like integer a and then if I want to use a, a equals five, and then let's say I'm just calling a here. There you go. If you're really into Jupyter, this is pretty cool, especially if you're into Jupyter and also use Fortran. This kind of gives you that, that REPL-like environment where you can do some preemptive coding before you put it into your Fortran code. And you can get some, some minor testing done. Now, like I was pointing out, this is a pre-alpha package. So there's, it's still building up that you may come across bugs, something to start pointing out to the, the Git repository, which I'll also post in the link in the description below. If you're trying to learn how to code in Fortran, I do have a crash course, which we'll post up right now. Other tools I've shown is the Fortran package manager. Another really cool thing. That's a different type of tool, all this stuff Fortran related really like how all of it's being brought into a more modern kind of coding setting. 
Okay, and that's what I have for you this week. If you like what I've been doing, please give this video a like and subscribe. If you have any other packages that you want me to cover, feel free to comment in the sections below. Tweet at me at Twitter at DJ's Office Hours or email me at DJ's Office Hours at gmail.com. Hope you learned something new, and I'll see you guys next week.